morning, everyone. I would ask that everyone who is by the door, if you could come in a little bit closer, because I think folks are still starting to uh, arrive. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for coming here. I, I don't know quite how I feel. I mean, it's, it's a very special moment, I think, for all of us. It's a very moving time um, to be here to celebrate the beginning of construction of this project that I think so many stakeholders, so many individuals um, dreamed long hours about and worked very hard um, to make a reality. Um, there's a quite a buzz in the neighborhood, I should mention. When I walk up and down the streets, there's a sense of hope that I think wasn't there. And it really is in large part because this project will help in the transforming and preservation of the neighborhood. We did want to, as we start construction, take a moment to thank our earliest and lead donors, um, those of you here in the room, for really believing in this project and making it possible. Um, you were the ones that took the leap with us. I mean, there were moments in the early on in this project where I think even myself and others on staff and our board were thinking, well, is this possible? Can we do this thing? And uh, obviously, we're starting construction, so um, it's, it's not a done thing, but it's something that um, we can see the end in sight. And so we're very happy about that. We're really pleased to announce that to date, we've raised $17.1 million. <laughs> and that $17.1 million represents gifts from over 800 community donors to date, from very large gifts to very small gifts, and we really treasure all of them. Um, and of course, we're not done yet. There's still work to be done, but we'll be uh, continuing on the fundraising track for a bit. Um, but really here today, um, we're here to celebrate the start of construction. So I'd like to, at this point, introduce our first speaker, um, our board of trustees co-president, Gloria Lungwakiyama. Um, she is someone who's very, very special, who, like me, is sort of an American-born with some long generational ties uh, in the neighborhood and in this region. So, Gloria. Thanks, Ron. Well, who would have thought how many years ago? This, this process, as Helen Kay will recall, has been going on for a decade. And who would have thought here we are standing today? It's just, just amazing. All I can say is a wow. Uh, it, it was really a leap of faith that the staff and the board took about three or so years ago and uh, to, to launch this campaign and really a testimony to the Gungyek Investment Company who put their faith in the Wingwick Asian Museum to be stewards of this building. Uh, as you all know or may have heard, this building started with 170 Chinese uh, immigrants who pooled their money in 1910 to form the Gungyek Investment Company to construct the two buildings. This is the East Gungyek Building and over there is the West Gungyek Building. <coughs> My grandfather uh, happened to be one of those shareholders, so it has a very strong tie to our family and uh, uh, long generations. Uh, I've talked to my two uncles, and they recall when they were kids, their father had a cab company in the corner of this building. And so there's long, long ties there. And so it's uh, with great uh, you know, sense of history that we're able to continue with this. So. Um, I look forward to continuing with this and continuing it for the future generations, our children and the generations to come. So again, wow, thanks for coming. It's more to come. Thank you, Gloria. Um, Ellen Ferguson, our other board uh, co-president and one of our lead donors, um, Ellen is someone who I have a lot of affection for. She really is the one who 
mentored me in the museum profession when I arrived in the museum field 15 years ago. And she and her family have been very, very gracious in supporting this project on all levels, financial, emotional, um, her sage advice, savvy insights have been really, really um, transformative for the organization. Ellen? Yeah. Oh, boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ron. That's very touching. It's so fantastic to see you all here today. And I just want to add my voice on, in, uh, on behalf of my father, Hugh Ferguson, uh, who's here with us today. Uh, for thanking you all for your most incredibly generous uh, and early support of this fantastic project. It's such a thrill to be in this building today, and I know my dad is an old construction guy. He always appreciates a good building, and uh, he knew that, th that this building had such promise. Uh, dad and I uh, represent third and fourth generation Seattleites. We're very, very proud to be from Seattle. Uh, it's a great city to be from, and in to be a part of, and we're so appreciative and conscious of all the communities that make Seattle the great city that it is, certainly the APA community, one of them, and building both the city and the region and being in this building is so meaningful and those worn stairways that have worn by the footsteps of the many people who built the city. Um, so we're just so thrilled to be a part of this project and so appreciative of sharing the opportunity with uh, all of you. I have one other little perspective I get to add. As Ron mentioned, I'm a, a museum professional, 30 years uh, at the Burke Museum. And in that regard, I get to have this uh, national perspective on museums and the Wingloop Museum in particular. And over the past 10 years, I will tell you, there has not been a conference, whether state or regional or national, that there has not been a Wingloop staff member or Ron himself on a panel sharing uh, new ways of doing things in museum. And I tell you, we call it the wing loop sphere of, inf of influence. I mean, it's a, a relatively small space physically, but the influence is great, and it's reflected in the support of great national funders from the Ford Foundation and Rockefeller Brothers, Nathan Cummings, and so on, that they know that something very, very special is happening out here, and it's that the wing loop under Ron's leadership and the great team that he put together found a way to tell the stories, the untold stories of people, and they always put the people first and the communities first, the stories first, and then the artifacts illustrate those stories. And there are many aha moments that happen in the Wingwood Museum. And one way that I get final note to just share how, how much the Wingwood Sphere of Influence has felt under Ron's leadership is just two months ago in Boston, our 100th anniversary of the American Association of Museums, our great professional organization, nearly 10,000 people there, went up on the great jumbotron, they rolled out the 100 museum champions that have influenced and changed the face, literally, of museums over the past century. And there was Ron Chu, one of the few people from west of the Mississippi, one of the youngest, probably, and I'll tell you, a quarter of the folks on that list are no longer with us, so it's even a smaller group, and we're happy that you're with us. <laughs> One of the youngest, one of probably truly the newest to the profession, which is all the more impressive in the leadership that he's shown and that's recognized nationally. So I just wanted to share that with you, that no, not only are you investing in a wonderful, wonderful organization that's going to be such an addition to our local community, but also to the national, national museum <coughs> change. You're part of making change, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ellen. I almost feel like I should make a will since I haven't <laughs> done that yet. Uh, but, I, but I plan to be around for a few years. Um, representing the state of Washington, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Sharon Tomiko Santos, uh, who's here today. I should mention the state was a very early on supporter of the project. Um, the um, state provided $1.5 million for acquisition of this site and enabled us then to move forward with uh, the project. Um, one story I wanted to share about Sharon, actually, is she was on our board. No conflict of interest there, um, but uh, she's no longer on our board. But she really was one of the early visionaries who led us to begin thinking about expanding and growing the organization. Back in those early years when Sharon was on our board, um, our board members really were simply members. They didn't contribute a whole lot. We had, didn't have a developed annual fund. It was Sharon who stepped forward and said, well, you know, we should be supporting this organization at a higher level if we have resources. So she was um, our lead president club member, and she made her little payments on her 
sort of limited income as a state rep, and but she uh, probably her whole salary kind of went into the President's Club. But we really appreciated that because it took some vision and courage to really do that as someone who believed in the institution and felt that people need to step forward when there's a cause that should be supported. So Sharon, you want to come say a few words? Thank you very much, Ron. I appreciate that. I was uh, momentarily afraid you were going to tell some other stories, <laughs> like the fact that he's now living in the house that I grew up in. <laughs> um, Good morning. Uh, it is my deep honor and pleasure to stand here really representing uh, the state of Washington, my colleagues in the legislature, including uh, the Speaker of the House, Frank Chop, the Majority Leader, Lynn Kessler, um, as well as uh, representatives from the Governor's Office, Lyle Kasim is here. No, Lyle Kasim, I'm sorry. Lyle is here, Conseco. Um, I just uh, wanted to share very quickly why I am so proud to stand before all of you on this very auspicious day. I stand here not only as the representative from the International District uh, in the state of Washington, but I also stand here as an historian by training um, and perhaps most important as a member of this community. Um, I looked back at uh, one of the first minutes um, of a board meeting that I attended, and it was in late 1996, and on the agenda was approval of our 1997 budget. And I remember very clearly, Ron, um, that we were truly the definition of a grassroots community-based organization. And uh, just to give you an idea of how far this institution has come, it really is now an institution, that first budget I sat in approval of uh, included a net, uh, not profit, but a net income over expenses of just under $9,000. Um, that's how far we have come. Um, but it takes leadership. It takes leadership from the community. It takes leadership from staff. Um, Ellen Ferguson certainly has already um, given you an indicator of the visionary that Ron is. I know that uh, as a member of the board, um, I always look to leaders on the board, including Gloria Lung Wakayama, Ellen Ferguson, Helen Kay, some of our longtime leaders, and I think that they would agree with me that when Ron first proposed the idea of a permanent site, we thought maybe he was a little touched, um, <laughs> that it was an audacious proposal. And yet, we all know that from big dreams come big plans and great realities. And I find that this uh, early groundbreaking for the Gong Yip building is really quite a wonderful metaphor for the transformation of the Wing Luke Asian Museum, where it took people dreaming of a better life to cross over weeks, sometimes legally, sometimes illegally, to arrive here in this country with this idea that they wanted to make something better of themselves, to be able to raise their families, to be able to transmit to future generations their mores, their culture, their beliefs, their ways of living. And just as the early immigrant pioneers came together to form this Gong Yik, uh, Association, to build this place where new immigrants can first settle in, establish their roots, and indeed to uh, develop the kinds of family and community networks that allowed not only the Chinese American community, but the Pan-Asian American community to thrive and to flourish. So too, I see the Wing Luke Asian Museum by taking this step as settling in, establishing their roots, and saying to all of Seattle and the Puget Sound region and the nation that the Asian Pacific Americans are here as full-fledged members of our great family of Americans, that we have a story to tell, that we have made contributions, and they are embedded in the stories of our lives in the stories of our forebears. 
I want to conclude by um, um, somewhat on a somber note, and I apologize for doing so, but I think it's important that as we celebrate this coming together of community, that it is the weaving together of individuals, of individual families, of our life as a community, that there's an important presence that's missing today. Anyone who attends any event in the International District or having to do with any um, organizations in the International District are very familiar with the site of our own um, International District Emergency uh, Services um, uh, cadre led by Donnie Chin. And I think um, we can all recognize and respect Donnie's absence uh, today given the passing of his mother who was also a firm fixture and contributor to this community. Um, and I think that by recognizing, there's Donnie, that we want to take this opportunity to remember Myra Chin because she too represents so many of the patriarchs and matriarchs that helped build this community into what it is. And so without putting a damper on our celebration, let us all reflect on what this means today and tomorrow. And I congratulate Ron, the staff, and the board for all of the work that you've done. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for those eloquent words. At this point, I'd like to introduce uh, King County Executive Ron Sims, a longtime uh, friend of the neighborhood. Um, Ron, if you want to step forward this way. I did want to mention that Ron uh, is one of the first people I spoke to um, when this project started to gel. I worked on a fundraising feasibility study, which was presented to our board as part of looking at whether this project would move forward. Um, and of course, I had a tough sell job, um, given that uh, there was a lot of uh, question about whether we could raise the money to make this happen. So I called up Ron as part of this fundraising feasibility study. And of course, I know Ron is a dreamer as well. And so I said, I know, I'll get Ron to kind of <laughs> say this thing will work. So, so he sat down with me, took the time to sit down, and talked about all kinds of strategies about how we might make this a green building, potential sources, pockets of money here and there. It was amazing, it was a lesson for me, both in politics, but, but as well as sort of how funding happens. But ultimately it was, uh, as I reflect on it, the fact that there was a dreamer in the room, somebody who um, uh, also dreams about things, dreams very big, um, and finds ways to make things happen. And along the way, as we've moved forward with the project, we've really appreciated Ron, and, and I know all of us here in the International District appreciate him just for his vision and his warmth and, and really strong sense of caring about uh, this neighborhood. So Ron, um, I think I've spoken for longer than you. <laughs> so. It's great to be here, and I need to acknowledge uh, the County Council Chair, Larry Phillips, who's here this morning as well. The, uh, there was something else I told Ron in that meeting, and uh, among a, a variety of funding strategies, I said, can you talk to my wife? And um, I said, you know, she has a lot of ideas as well. That was probably a marked change in my fanaticism. Let me tell you about my wife. My wife was a University of Washington student. I have a number of pictures of her with very, very long hair. And she was a, became a radical student on the University of Washington campus. And her first demonstration, active one, was against King County, <laughs> truthfully. Uh, it was building a King Dome. It was very clear that people saw that as progress. And uh, many students felt that they were losing something very, very important to them, which was the International District. So she met Ron. So she came back and she was talking about why this project was so important to her and to all that she represented. 
from the Philippines and she was born there and she came to this community. And she said, you know, that it is important that history live and be remembered. And she thought that there's gonna be an inevitable kind of change that would occur. And so that the history of this community would one day be only in textbooks, but would never be living. And she said, it's not just the merchants that you see, that is a reminder of the incredible diversity in this community and its deep-rooted history. It's not just the double parking that makes this area unique. <laughs> Trust me, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I appreciate the double parking as many times as I have utilized that approach as I run into a restaurant to pick up a to-go package. The, um, she talked about the museum and she talked about Ron's vision of having something that would be enduring across a number of generations. And how as an Asian, it was important. As a Filipino, it was important that there needed to be deep, deep roots. Something that would not change. Something you could build upon and make it living. So I realized that it was important this isn't just a museum project as people would talk about a museum project. This is something more important, more significant. It is a living form of remembering history, a reminder, and we will build upon that. And that's why King County stood behind and funded this project. Ron was elegant, Joy Shigaki was per unrelenting, <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, Gloria, Ms. Kay. But there was another party who we didn't acknowledge, and I want to tell you what their role was. When I was in the Washington State Legislature working for Senator George Fleming, there was a museum in need of a new home, and there was a person named Ben Wu who said, you know, we have a garage that we can remodel and make a new home for the Wing Luke Museum. And so when Ben Wu and Auntie Ruth talked about this project, they talked about it with the same depth of passion and feeling that my wife did. So why did I make the decision I made? It was not just Ron's vision and an active board. It was an incredible, wonderful wife who reminded me of the importance of things. And wonderful friends in Booth and, and Ben and Ruth, who reminded me that at times elected officials need to stand up for something that is a dreamer's dream, but something that an entire community will appreciate for generations to come. It was great to be here, and thank you. Thank you, Ron. Boy, it's tough to follow all these speakers and come back in here, so. <laughs> Um, uh, Mayor Greg Nichols is here. We're really pleased that he could join us. I want to share one brief story about Mayor Nichols and, and his uh, early, early support. We, uh, as I mentioned, you know, during this feasibility study phase, you, you don't know whether this thing can happen or not. Um, we met a number of us from the museum with Mayor Nichols and talked about this dream, talked about this vision. And of course, um, he, it's got a lot of things on his mind. Um, we were very impressed with how he tracked. I mean, we, you know, the, I think we had approached you, um, Greg, in the midst of some very difficult economic times. Um, we left that meeting uh, feeling um, very energized, I think, because of the fact that um, this was a project that was important to him. It was a project in a neighborhood that was important to him. And following that meeting, um, I, of course, we had a number of meetings with city council members, some of whom are here today and will be acknowledged in a little bit. But, um, you know, we, we felt really good because there was somebody who cared about the neighborhood. And not simply cared, but also was willing to step forward and find a way to make it work. And as a result of that conversation I know that we had, we were able to get a million dollar appropriation from the city really at a time where funds were very, very difficult. And I um, really want to acknowledge that, um, that commitment and that vision uh, very early on. 
Mayor Nichols. Thank you. This is uh, uh, very perilous because I've been watching uh, as a couple of council members have come in and I want to acknowledge uh, the members who are here, but I may have missed one or two. So uh, I want to acknowledge uh, council member Jan Drago. Count, go ahead. <laughs> council member Richard McIver. <laughs> council member Richard Conlon. <laughs> council member David Della. <laughs> council member Peter Steibrook. Councilmember Tom Rasmussen. Are there any others who have gotten through that I didn't? And I want to acknowledge them for a couple of reasons. One, uh, as Ron said, uh, the uh, beginning of this project was uh, occurring during pretty difficult uh, times. It was after the uh, tax in uh, New York and Washington of September 11th and Seattle and King County and our region got hit harder than economically than any other region in the country. And because of the way this project is, uh, is organized and it's not owned by the government, it means that it's a general fund uh, obligation for us to, uh, to participate in this. It was not easy, but the city council unanimously supported uh, the appropriation to be an early partner in this. We knew it would be a strong signal, particularly in tough economic times, that the city stood behind this project. So we're very happy and proud to be part of that. Secondly, I wanted to acknowledge the council members because of the, the human being uh, who, uh, whose name uh, adorns this museum. Wing Luke uh, was a, uh, a giant figure uh, in the politics of Seattle. In the early 1960s, he ran for the Seattle City Council and was the first Asian American member of the Seattle City Council. And uh, his three sisters are here today, uh, Betty, Ruby, and Marge. And I want to acknowledge that their presence here today. When he was elected, I think it's fair to say city government was fairly sleepy in Seattle, probably an era some people yearn for us to return to. <laughs> um, but uh, Wing Luke was not about uh, a sleepy government. He was about a government that uh, st stepped up to social justice, that stepped up to uh, the opportunities the city had to move forward. And it was a tragic loss uh, when he was killed uh, uh, just a few short years after that initial election. So thank you for being here. And, and the spirit of Wing Luke uh, is going to live uh, forever uh, in this building. The, um, the other, uh, there are a lot of emotions with this, and I thought uh, uh, Sharon Tomiko Santos really uh, did a great job of, uh, of talking about the, uh, the idea of a family, which I think this really represents. One of the joys I've had in the last 15 years uh, as my children were growing up was becoming an amateur genealogist. I've researched my family's history. I've gone from knowing maybe eight or 10 of my ancestors' names and nothing else, to now having a database of 4,000 people who I know I'm related to. And I'm really proud of that. I've tried to learn the stories about how my family came to this continent, how they decided to build a better life for their children uh, and their grandchildren. And it has been really an enriching experience for me. Uh, and this museum is going to be about learning about the Seattle family, the uh, Chinese and Japanese and Filipino pioneers who came here well over a century ago and helped to build this community, uh, people whose uh, families continue uh, to help build this community. It's important for us to know those stories. It's important for us to understand uh, from where this community uh, came. It's important for us to know the happy stories and the not so happy stories as well so that we don't repeat uh, some of the mistakes of the past that, uh, that we've experienced. Uh, Ron, you and your staff deserve an incredible amount of uh, 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 credit for having the faith to uh, undertake this, uh, and I want to congratulate you and thank you for having that faith. The board of the Wingwood Museum, both past and present, uh, it's just, it is an audacious project that you've taken on. It helps us to accomplish a number of things in the neighborhood here. We, very much hope that uh, over time we're able to open up all of these buildings that have been empty above the, the uh, ground floor since the Ozark uh, Hotel fire of many years ago. This is going to be an important symbol of how we can do that in a creative way in a historic building. So everyone deserves credit here today. It is an important day. It isn't just another uh, groundbreaking. 
fact, I don't know that we actually are going to get a chance to break, <laughs> break ground uh, or we'll be asked for additional contributions. Uh, <laughs> but it is an important day for us to understand Seattle, its history, and its future. And I congratulate you. Thank you. Now that you mentioned extra money, <laughs> I do hope everyone sticks around. We will have very shortly a signing ceremony um, inside this space. At this time, I'd like to introduce Sue Colleton, representing the Paul G. Allen Family Foundation. Um, Sue has been great. Uh, she was very early on a very sophisticated and knowledgeable person about capital campaigns. We appreciated picking her brain on many fronts, um, looking at not simply the issue of building a project, but how can we sustain it and make it a useful, functional element in terms of the neighborhood, but one that endures and not simply collapses after the building is built. And we really appreciated um, that understanding and insight and also uh, the support on many levels. It's nice to have a neighbor that uh, is as supportive uh, as the Paul G. Allen Foundation. Sue? <laughs> Thank you. On behalf of Vulcan and the Paul G. Allen family, uh, the Paul G. Allen Family Foundation, we are thrilled to be part of this very exciting project here in the International District. As neighbors, as Ron said, and, and longtime supporters of the Wingloop Museum, we know what a unique role it plays in our community. And we also understand the, uh, the economic, the cultural, the social benefits associated with this project. The new museum is going to tell a compelling story, and we also know it's going to be a rich community resource for this distinctly diverse neighborhood. And Ron, to you and everyone involved, we congratulate you on reaching this major milestone and can't wait to be the first ones in the door. Thank you, Sue. I did also want to acknowledge Hung Boo, also from the Allen Foundation. You want to raise your hand? And Marie Croce, I saw. Somewhere, Marie, Rachel, thank you for being here. Martha Cho uh, will be coming up here. Uh, Martha, um, representing the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I'm ne never quite sure how to introduce Martha because usually I, in the old days, I used to see her running around Green Lake and she was going faster than me, so I didn't feel like talking much. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case, but. Uh, Martha has been uh, very early on, booster, advisor, really helped us with a number of strategy sessions to look at how we might get uh, public support. And um, uh, just a great friend to the museum, really uh, understands the importance of the museum in the neighborhood. And Martha, just come up here and say <laughs> something. Well, like everybody here, uh, I think we come here with a spirit of great excitement. Um, it's really an honor for me to represent the Gates Foundation, and I'm fortunate that Katie and Annie were out of town because I don't have the opportunity to work in the Pacific Northwest grant making, and so I have the opportunity to be here and let you know how excited the Foundation is about our participation in this. You know, it's interesting uh, now working in philanthropy and thinking about how decisions are made. And some of the decisions and some of the factors are how much community support is there for a project. This project, uh, as you can tell from the donors and the people who are here, has such a tremendous and diverse base of community support. It is owned by the community. And it has been said before, it is more than just a museum. It is a community institution. It is a memory bank. It is a voice and it is a face for our community. So we are really thrilled to be part of the family of funders uh, and participate in the support of this. You know, it's been interesting to watch the Wing Luke over many years, as many of you have, uh, to watch the auctions from uh, the bento boxes, uh, at late night auctions, and to think about what this represents. You know, there's a word that hasn't been mentioned that I think is a common quality of the board members, of Ron, of the people and the families who bought this building, and that is courage. It takes tremendous courage to do what the founders did here. It took tremendous courage and leadership to have a vision for this museum here. It took courage to step forward, and it took courage to build this. And I think that is also a hallmark for many of us who are children of immigrants, 
And uh, this building, again, represents their story. And we know that that story will be told for years and years to many generations. So congratulations to Wing Luke, to the hard work of the board, to Ron, to you and your passion, and to all of the community members. It is part of us. Congratulations. One of the uh, program spaces inside the new museum is, is going to be a new art gallery which will be uh, named in honor of George Sudakawa, one of our pioneer Northwest Asian American artists and one of the leading artists in our region. Um, it's been a real privilege working with uh, the Sudakawa family on um, development of this space. Um, uh, we did honor George Suikawa, I think, actually as one of our first uh, awardees back some time ago when our auction was a little more manageable. We've sort of evolved a little bit beyond that, but um, it really represents, I think, our feeling about George's role and his importance uh, in this neighborhood and to the artistic community. Um, uh, at this point, I'd like to ask Jerry to come up and say a few words, uh, if you would, on behalf of the family. Thank you. You know, people keep filtering in the door and you never know. But I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if my was going to make it today. On behalf of my mother, Ayame, and my sister, Mayumi, my brother James, and my brother Marcus, it's a great honor and privilege to be here speaking to you. My father was uh, born in Seattle in 1910, the same year that this building uh, was started. And he was a part of the fabric of this district. The, uh, his family was involved in import-export and um, I'm sure that he has many memories of being part of this community from working in the neighborhood. And they had a family grocery store back in the old days that was on Jackson Street. And they had another uh, family grocery store, import-export business that was down in the international, I mean, excuse me, Pioneer Square area. But um, it's just a great honor to acknowledge my father's uh, part of the cultural and historic fabric of this neighborhood. I think arts is, is culture and culture is history. And I think because uh, the Wing Loop Museum represents so many uh, of those things that come together in one place and gives back so much to the community. Um, it's a great honor to acknowledge my father who died in act actually nine years ago. It would be 10 years when I think this building is opened up to acknowledge his uh, part in uh, the, uh, the cultural fabric of this area. And I think um, we're, as a family, are greatly honored to be part of such a wonderful project that I think we all support. Do you want to say anything? Or? Just one thing. I think that for the artists in our community have been supporting the museum for many, many years, and they really look forward to this, this space to, to, to be a showcase of, of both the traditional and historic artists as well as our, our contemporary artist friends. So really looking forward to this. Thanks a lot, Ron, and everybody. I just think, thank you, thank you, Wingla, for honoring my father. Thank you. Again, likewise, we're very touched by your involvement in this project, both Miami and Jerry. At this juncture, I'm going to make a number number of acknowledgments, uh, and I would ask uh, when I call out your name, uh, to please raise your hand. Um, and I'm hoping to get through this uh, fairly briskly. Um, but we did want to acknowledge all of you for um, your, please, Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> it's always hard to sort of tell whether a truck's going to come running down the street and you can't like hear what you're saying. Um, anyway, uh, I want to acknowledge the Capital Campaign co-chairs Martha Cho, who is up here. Martha, Ellen Ferguson, uh, if you want to raise your hand again. I know you've already appeared on stage. <laughs> Helen Kay, 
Helen. Where's Helen? Tomio Marguchi. Tom Wynn. Gilar Sabanga. And Gloria Lung Wakayama. Thank you all. Wingluk Asian Museum Board. I'm not going to go through all the names, but the board members, if you could raise your hands. You guys are the ones that made. Thank you. You guys were the ones that jumped out on the cliff and jumped off with the rest of us. Thank you very much. Um, Capital Campaign Steering Committee, if Capital Campaign Steering Committee members, any here want to raise their hands? Thank you. Thank you all. Wingluk Asian Museum staff. We're surrounded by staff here. Staff are very good. Indulge me for just a minute, too, because I, I did want to, to really acknowledge their critical role in this project. Uh, as Ellen mentioned, I do have the opportunity to get a lot of accolades um, uh, at various high levels, but in truth, uh, the work of this institution is carried out by the staff, all the way from, you think that I like wrote my speech, no, uh, <laughs> Beth Takakawa, our ABLE Associate Director, somewhere here, thank you, Beth. Uh, you know, and I wasn't the one that you know brought the media here and arranged the you know Joanne Aquino worked on that. Cassie Chin was part of helping Bob Fisher. I could go on and on about the staff. I have an amazing staff, and and I, I feel very blessed because I've got the best staff of any arts organization in the city. I think um, I should also mention that relative to the capital campaign, our staff, our underpaid staff contributed over $80,000 of their own money to this campaign. <laughs> Capital campaign counselor, you gotta have counsel to lead you along the way and sort of guide you and give you some good advice. Collins Group, uh, folks from the Collins Group wanna raise their hands? Uh, <laughs> Is Anne Marie here? Okay, I can't see. Anyway, thank you. Uh, representing the state of Washington, uh, Senator Jeannie Cole Wells. Is she still here, or did she was she able to make it? I didn't see her. Uh, Speaker of the House Frank Chop. I know he was here. He's he still here. Thank you. Sir. State representatives Phyllis uh, Gutierrez Kenny. Phyllis. Uh, Zach Hutchin, Zach, thank you. Lynn Kessler, thank you. Joe McDermott, and Tim Ornsby, okay. Um, representing King County, uh, County Council President Larry Phillips, I saw him earlier. So his help. How could I miss him? He's the tallest guy here. And then, of course, uh, as Mayor Nichols mentioned, representing the city, um, and I'll mention their names again, you want to raise your hands, Jan Drago, uh, Richard Conlon, David Della, Richard McIver, Tom Rasmussen, and Peter Steinbrook. So how come the other two or whatever aren't here? You know, everybody else is here. So. Um, and then we have some staff members representing some, some of, uh, elected officials. Sheila Babb from Senator Patty Murray's office. Sheila, thank you. Uh, Sh Shakti Hawkins from Senator Maria Cantwell's office. I did want to acknowledge we were very fortunate in getting uh, federal appropriations to support this project as well. So thanks to Senator Murray and uh, Cantwell for their assistance on that front. Lyle Canseco from Governor Christine Gregoire's office. Is Lyle here? Oh, oh, there you are. Monica Ghosh from County Council Member Dow Constantine's office. Thank you for coming. Uh, and I 
Cindy Domingo. Did you make it here, Cindy? Or did you, Cindy? From uh, Council Member Larry Gossett's office. Anyway, thank you all. Let's give another round of applause here. <laughs> I'm not done yet, by the way. Um, I did want to acknowledge our financing partners um, and then mention that we're very soon to close on a very significant, significant new market tax credits equity deal. And this is with the National Development Council, Wells Fargo Bank, and the Wells Fargo Community Development Corporation. Our financing consultant is Tony Toe of Homesite. I saw Tony back there somewhere. <laughs> and our attorney is Tom Nelson of Cantor Taylor McCarthy. Um, this initiative is really going to bring some much needed private investment dollars to the project and to this community. And um, I would ask for any of those folks uh, who are part of our financing partners to raise their hand at this point. So just to be acknowledged. Uh, and let me re-acknowledge re, uh, our museum royalty, which is the family of City Council member Wayne Luke, who continues to be an inspiration to us uh, to this day. And uh, I know Betty Luke is here, Ruby, and Marge, so thank you again for, for coming and being part of the celebration. <laughs> now, the project team, uh, our architects from Olson, Sunberg, Kundig, and Allen, our project manager, home site, our construction contractor, Marpak. I, I would ask that all the project team members raise your hands at this point. Thank you all very, very much. We really look forward to uh, successful completion and construction. We're pretty confident that we'll get there. Now, at this juncture of the program, um, and, and I need to just check in with staff. Was, was Vanny Sam able to? Oh, okay, okay, good, all right, thank you. I know this is the last day of school, so things are a little bit <laughs> tricky. I have two kids as well who are, at some point I gotta pick up, I suppose. <laughs> um, but um, one of the contributors to this particular project was the third grade class of teacher Sandra Kim at the Wing Luke Elementary School. And last year, in this amazing project, the class studied the neighborhood and this building specifically and produced a book uh, of poetry, photographs, and oral histories reflecting on the history in this place, but then linking it also to their own experiences. Um, at this point, I'd like to uh, welcome Vanny, who I believe is in fourth grade, right? Fourth grade from the school to read a poem for us. Vanny? Kim took us to a bunch of field trips to the Kanyak building. Sadly, she's not here. She's all the way in Texas, but she wanted to be here. <laughs> now I'll be reading you a poem that I wrote. <laughs> the Kanyak building is very dark. Inside the building, there were stairs in a room that has holes. Why does it have holes? The hallway was dark and dirty too. One wall was covered up. That is so mysterious and befuddling. <laughs> there were 100 rooms in the building. Think how many people are living in that building. Lots of people were living there. If people used to live there and they're still living, it'd be great to meet them. <laughs> my kids could do that. <laughs> Someday. Um, this, we're really, um, this is, brings us to the conclusion of uh, this event, which again, we didn't want to uh, end with uh, the signing. Uh, originally, I should mention, and Sharon uh, Tomiko Santos uh, alluded to this earlier, originally we were actually going to ask Jimmy Marr, the owner of the Yifun Company, to come up and help with Vanny in leading us on the signing of the buildings. 
Uh, as you may have read, uh, his younger sister, Myra Chin, uh, owner and operator of the Sun May Company, passed away. And so I believe Uncle Jimmy is the last of that family. Um, he is, as many of you know, the funeral director um, in the community, and he's 91 years old. We have the fortunate uh, privilege of he's donating his store, the Ying Fung Company, to our museum as um, historic space, which will be installed in this um, building. But unfortunately, he can't make it uh, and be here with us. Um, uh, in his place, uh, Helen Kay will be coming up here and helping us uh, in the signing. I should say a word about it, Helen. Uh, every board member, every other board member she mentions, oh, I've been around forever. I'm the oldest board member around. And, <laughs> and uh, I don't know if she's the oldest. Uh, I think Jimmy Mark's a little bit older than you. But uh, she's been around uh, in the beginning stages and we're a tiny institution, been around as we've grown and is really here to witness and be part of um, celebrating as we build a permanent home here in this community. Um, so uh, before we do the signing, I, I, I did want to welcome you all for an informal reception back at the museum, if any of you have time. Uh, we do look forward to keeping you informed uh, as we begin our public community campaign, which is kicking off next month. And uh, thank you all for, for being part of this uh, ceremony and uh, being part of this is very, very special for all of us. So again, at this time, uh, I believe we have a few staff members who will help lead us. Russ over there and Helen and Dan. Helen and Dan. So let's go ahead and uh, start this signing. So.